Right, hello folks, I'm back at the workshop. Uh, I've decided in the end, because the old uh, Ultros regulator was an old one, uh, I decided to go the old log and buy a new one. But what I bought instead of the Ultros, I bought a Robert Lane regulator. It's uh, a Lancet Mark 9. Uh, and it fits the same as the other one did actually. Not all of Robert Lane's uh, Regulators need the, the cylinder drilling. Didn't didn't bother me if I had to drill it, because uh, I've got a pillar drill to do it. Uh, but this one, uh, you can vent the air through the back of the uh, back of the uh, air valve, the reg, uh, exhaust valve, uh, and it's got a list of different rifles. Uh, some that need hole drilling through the cylinder. Others that uh, you can get away without it. Or the, the Hatsons, you don't need to drill the hole in. Uh, so it, it basically says list of makes and models that generally don't require, require a breathe hole drilling. Uh, and it says many makes models of air rifle do not have to have a breathe hole drilled in the reservoir. All you have to, to do typically. Uh, when fitting these regulators is to remove the uh, reservoir end cap o-ring seal which is on if you've got a removable cylinder when you take the exhaust valve out there's a little o-ring there that stops anything leaking out so you remove you remove that that seal and you can modify the the actual uh, valve a bit by cutting a groove through the actual uh, threads and the reason I've I knew this one was that kind to start off with, was the regulator itself. Now, if, if the regulators require the old drilling, they've got two O-rings, and you drill, you drill in the reservoir between those two O-rings. This one only has the one. So the O-ring, it will go in this way. The O-ring at the back stops any air going past that. It's got a breathe hole at the top, so if it does need to vent air out, it will vent the air out and it will then be able to come out behind the exhaust valve so that's the way of doing it <coughs> also if you remember on the last one uh, I drilled the transfer port out to, port out to three millimetres and what that gave me was a, a rifle that was uh, about a foot pound over the limit so uh, I had to adjust the, uh, the transfer port again but reading between the lines with uh, Robert Lane uh, the way to counteract that extra power is to put packers on the exhaust valve spring and that then reduces that power. So uh, it's set my rifle up, the regulator up, uh, so it should be shooting at 12 foot pounds. Uh, it basically says that what you should do is uh, don't alter the regulator until it's the last uh, port point really at the last point because uh, what you're supposed to do to get your power down is to pay that spring out. Uh, you do drill it out to 3.2 millimeters of transfer port so that makes it uh, more efficient with the air blowing through uh, and as I say the way to counteract any extra power is with the hammer spring to wind it down and uh, by packing out the, the actual uh, exhaust valve spring. So what I've got to do now is re-drill out the transfer port and what I'll do, I've got a 2mm port in at the moment, a brand new one, I'll leave that in and I'll leave that as it is. So what all I'll do, the old transfer port, I'm going to drill that one out again, I'll use that one uh, and then I will make modifications to the actual uh, exhaust valve by cutting the groove in so the air can vent out if it needs to. So we'll get on with that and uh, I'll show you the progress.
Okay, so I've got the, uh, the pillar drill and the uh, transfer port clamped in, so uh, we'll carry on with drilling that out to three millimetres. So that's the uh, that's the transfer transfer port finished and ready for use. So the next thing will be to uh, mark off where the uh, the exhaust valve needs uh, modifying, along with the air tube. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> I've actually got some masking tape, I've got a pen and basically what you do uh, if you was going to drill an, an air hole into the tube it would be about there because you've got the uh, exhaust valve there that probably comes up to about here and in front of that you've got your regulator and you can see the breathe hole there well, if this was one that needed the air cylinder drilling out, there'd be another O-ring here, and you'd put the tape across at the top, mark it off where the hole needs to go, and you drill it in. Uh, when it goes in, the hole in the actual regulator needs to be in the upright position, because when the, uh, the piston in there pumps up and down, it pumps a lubricant, and if it's upside down, it would pump the lubricant out of this out of the uh, piston and into the base of the rifle so that's why the air holes are always on the top of the cylinder under the barrel uh, on this particular rifle uh, you've got the block there as well so because you can't put this under there what I'm going to do is put some tape here like you normally would take it out take the cylinder out and then put it in line going back and then I'll mark it off back at the uh, end of the uh, air tube I'll do it that way. And I've got some masking tape. I think you've got three of these at the pan shop for about a quid. So what I'm going to do is stick that on the underside there. Try and get it in the middle. It's a bit awkward. When it gets under there, it's going to come out. I'm sure, it is. So what I might have to do, I'll put a mark on the actual uh, tube just there, and then I'll uh, I'll move it up about to ten mil. We'll see. We'll get that out. <coughs> we'll see how that goes. I'll line it up with the outside of the stock and then we can get a vertical that way. Now I've got the marking on it. Alright, so there's the mark I put on it. Put it on there, so. Okay, so I've marked it. That's where the original mark was on the side. I found the vertical of that. And what I've got to do now is unscrew this, uh, cut a groove along the inside of the uh, exhaust valve, and I've also got to cut a little notch in the air cylinder so it can start breathing there. Right, I've marked it with that. So I made pin. Yeah, I can see where it is. So 
basically what I'm doing now is getting this off. And I've got to cut a groove along that mark there through all the uh, actual threads and that gives the air a place to come out of. You, do, you take the A-ring off at the back, the back seal you don't need to do anything with that, there's already a groove in it so that lets the air out and then you just put a little nick in that I'll have to try and find out where I put put the groove I might mark it actually but what I'll do now I'll cut the groove in that and that's the file it's, you see it's triangular in shape I've got to get it started off now and just cut the groove in there so what I'll probably do is put it in the vise to hold that steady and then I'll, I'll get going on it okay. Cutting through quite easy that being brass. I think that's about it to be honest. Let's go for the last one. So that is enough there, it's about a millimetre, that's enough for the air to leak out. Remembering that if, if you did take the regulator out, you can put the o-ring back there and that'll stop any air leaking out anyway. That's just so the uh, regulator can vent. If you can see that or not. But there is a groove there that will allow it to uh, vent possibly to a bit more on the end one Clean that up there, uh, and then I'll screw it back onto the uh, cylinder, and then we'll, we'll just uh, do a little uh, groove in the cylinder end like that, just there. Okay, what? Uh, there's the line where I'd, I'd marked with a pen from where I'd put the groove in, and because I couldn't see anything on this black, I just marked it with the actual uh, file on the actual tube so I'll take the, uh, the exhaust valve out now and we'll cut the slot in the end of that it's just a little V so it can vent out again just like that Thank 
shield being off there. That's all it needs. Just a little nick in the end. And that allows it to breathe. I'll clean out the tube now and then fit the regulator. Alright, so I screwed the uh, exhaust valve back on. You can see where the uh, the mark is in the groove. That allows it to breathe. As, as recommended by Robert Lane, I've got a, a baby bottle brush here. And that helps to uh, clean out any debris and muck that's got in there. see some on there. See a little bit in it where it's been cut. Uh, so yeah, you don't really need to uh, sand this one out. It's like glass inside there. It's so, uh, I don't know if I can see with this. I don't think it's a steel tube. I think it's an alloy one to be honest. It's just not very heavy. It's highly polished in there already, so I'm not going to sandpaper it. Uh, so what I'll do now, I'll fit the regulator in. Uh, uh, Robert did send some grease in the pack, but I've already got some anyway, so rather than open the pack up, I might as well grease it up here. So, just put the grease around the O-ring. And that'll just help it slide in. Put some grease on the bottom as well, where the O ring meets the exhaust valve. And remembering that the notches at the top and the air breathe holes at the top as well, so when it goes in going in that way you know that it's going to be at the top well, they can be a bit awkward shoving in there they are a bit tight you just got to take your time Now I might need to uh, take the valve out again and adjust the hammer, uh, not the hammer, but the, uh, the exhaust valve spring tension, which I probably will have to do, but I won't do that until I've chronographed it. So the action of just tightening that up should push the regulator into place. See there's a little nick there for the breathe hole at the back. Now I have taken the rifle down. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is actually take the, uh, the actual block off of the uh, cylinders to put the, the new transfer port back in. And I'll put it back together, put some air in it and we'll see what it's doing. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing now, I'll make sure there's tension pushed forward on that so it moves the uh, actual uh, pellet probe out of the way. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing the, the rear 25mm Allen bolt that's in it. It's going all the way to the bottom. So once this bolts in, you can't actually adjust it because it's in the way. So it works like the anti-tamper, but if you do need to adjust it, you can just take it out anyway. I have got the anti-tamper rod in my case. Uh, when I have got it set up the way I want it, I'll just put that back in. So that is that. 
that's an M4. Uh, I'm doing the opposite now. I'm pushing them back on the the actual uh, hammer to get it the uh, the breech screw. And that was a two millimeter, I believe. Yeah. So once this one's out, the rifle will come apart. Pin's just dropped out. Little pin there. You've really got to watch it. There's like a little wishbone in there, and that is basically uh, the triggers here, and that's what locates it into place. But you've got to be careful of that because it does come falling out every now and again. There's a little wishbone that I was on about. There's another piece there, and this is what I'm getting to. Two millimeter transfer port, and I'm replacing it with a three. Put that back in there. Keep that one on that. This falls into that. Now the trigger here is just there. Put the pin through it, and that lays on top there like that. Uh, what I've got to do then is by moving this up and down I've got to put the old there in line with that so that's what pulls it back pulls the probe back that spring has got to go over the trigger seal see ya. so and that that's got to fall into the uh, <coughs> transfer port hole so there's a lot of fiddling around and you can't always do it first time so I've got to wait for the best Turn it over, keeping the pressure on both sides. What I'm going to do, I'll pull the rear one in first if I can. So that should hold it in place. Before I put it all back together, see if it cocks and fires. I'm sure if that's gone all the way in or not. So this one's rather a long one. But it's going in. Yeah, that's there. So now I'm going to pull back on the slide so I can locate the little island screw there. Pull that back in. That is in. Now then, does it cock? Yes. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. So that's okay. do now I won't share the rest if you want to see how the rifle goes back together you can see that from the previous videos but uh, I'll get it back together and then we'll uh, we'll test it okay the actions back together so what I'll do next is uh, fill the air cylinder see if it's leaking or not if it does leak at this point uh, what I can do is put some PTF tape under the actual uh, o-ring uh, I'm hoping it's okay, but we'll see. 
Okay, so we'll do some uh, test shots then. Got Air Arms Diabolo Field, 16 grains. What I'm going to do is put uh, 10 shot string through it, see what the initial uh, power is doing. Five one. That's well up. That is. That's well over. That needs us to read your stint. Ah, oh, five two seven. Need making. <clears throat> and it's going to have to be the, uh, the exhaust valve spring needs tension on it. I can't see me going to wind this down. take that off it can be done with using drill bits actually you can get a special tool but you don't need a special tool you just need a couple of three millimeter drill bits sucking it like that just use that to unscrew it I think this will be under tension with the actual spring I would imagine it is there we go, there's the spring so you've got to put some tension on that and you don't need much according to uh, what Robert Lane was talking about. Uh, talking probably less than a millimetre.
see what difference that makes. Uh, <clears throat> two shims in it up to now. Still a bit too much, not consistent still. So it's going to need a lot of playing about with. Uh, maybe one more shim and then mess with the uh, the hammer spring. Okay, I've now got three shims in the rifle. So we'll see what the next shot, lot of ten shots, will bring us. Ten shots. Uh, <clears throat> I'll leave it to that for now. It will need more tuning to get it spot on, get the regulator working right. But uh, I think I've got it about right now. So it's took three shims. I'll uh, I'll measure out the shims and I'll I'll let you know how, how thick that shim was then in total. So that's the uh, the Robert Lane Lancet regulator. Mark 9 fitted and uh, you can take it as far as you want you know tuning these up it's a balance between hammer spring exhaust valve spring and uh, air pressure on the uh, regulator to get it where you need it so that's it for now thanks for watching and uh, the next time you'll see it will probably be doing some more field tests thanks a lot So I've got one of the shims on here now. Uh, you can see what size that is. It's uh, 0 0.83 millimeters. I've got three of those fitted, so uh, that's around 2.4, 2.5 uh, millimeters of shims on the uh, exhaust valve spring to bring it to where it is now. That's only a little washer I've used. But that's done the job.